Greetings from Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Los Gatos, California, on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, of which we remember the baptism of our Lord Jesus. And in Him coming into, into our world, and that word Epiphany, which we do associate with the uh, Magi or the wise men coming uh, to see Jesus, that that light comes into a dark world, and boy, do we need that light right now, to shine and to push away the shadows uh, that are around us. Uh, as um, we gather then together today, God comes to us as our Heavenly Father, giving us the gift of His Son, but always connecting by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we be blessed as we come into the presence of the Lord gathered around His Word. Our opening hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I will tell of a decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. 
Serve the Lord with fear. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a time of silent reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children, and inheritors with him of everlasting life. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our worship with our scripture readings. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 7. Here is my servant, whom I uphold. My chosen one in whom I delight, I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who, brings breath, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release them from the dungeon, those who sit in darkness. The epistle lesson is taken from Acts 16, verses 25 through 34. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. 
the jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before, God, before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and, all, and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. The Holy Gospel is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, children. It's a very sp special day for us to be connected to one another by the person of Jesus, our Savior. Well, in our story today, Jesus is all grown up. Last week he was 12. The week before that he was a, a baby. And before that, barely just born. Well, he's all grown up, and he is living in the world. He's living in our world. But it is time for him now to begin his special mission of being our Savior. Well, that has to do with this story we have about Jesus being baptized. Well, I'm standing by the baptismal font here at Holy Cross Lutheran Church. And it is a wonderful uh, place because this is where we have a great connection uh, with God through the promises that he gives in holy baptism. So now, for those of you that were baptized or may need to be baptized, it's important for us to really, really understand and welcome that comes as we are part of God's family, how special that is. Well, for Jesus, when he came, his cousin John was uh, calling everyone together. And when Jesus came to be baptized, at first John wasn't so sure because Jesus was sinless, right? Jesus never sinned. And yet Jesus says, no, it's important for me to do all things that others will do. He, in a sense, takes our place in baptism as well. Uh, when we uh, uh, focus specifically on Jesus' baptism, we see something remarkable happen. Because as Jesus is in the water and John baptizes him, he comes out and all of a sudden there's this big voice, this is my beloved son whom I love, with him I delight or well, I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and landed right on his uh, shoulder, I don't know, maybe landed on his head, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but the Holy Spirit came and Jesus was anointed then uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work that God had called him to do. It was a wonderful opportunity to see the Father in the voice, Jesus the Son, and then the Holy Spirit in the form of, of a dove. Well, when we take a look at our baptismal font here, we are reminded that when we are baptized, we use water, which is the way that God's blessings, spiritual blessings, connect to us. 
And as we pour that water in, we are reminded, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, what becomes important now is, is what your name is. Now, Jesus is, earthly na- Jesus is his earthly name. Kind of like my name's Andrew, or you have your first name, your first name. And when we're baptized, uh, we are baptized by our name into the name of Jesus. So it would be our name baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are also reminded in our baptismal font we have three candles. And why three? Father, Son, and and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the significant meaning of baptism is that as you have been baptized by your name into the name of the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we become part of his family. What's really exciting about this is that it's not just the Father telling Jesus, you are my son, with you I am well pleased. Put your name in there. God's saying, you are my daughter. You are my son. I love you. With you, I am well pleased. Wow, that's powerful. That's what baptism does for us, connecting us to Jesus. His forgiveness, his resurrection from the dead, he is alive. And then that same Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus and anointed him comes to us in baptism so that we then have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Remember, God the Holy Spirit that keeps us close in walking with Jesus. So I I would encourage you to talk to your parents or your grandparents about your baptism day and for the adults as well. Uh, Maybe find your baptismal certificate and show it to your children or find a way to Uh, find other photos or reminisce about the historic day. But also talk a little bit about what it means. And be sure to let the children in your life know that although we are imperfect as parents, that they are loved. And that you chose a special name for them and then had an opportunity to bring them where God, through baptism, would connect them into his family. What a great joy baptism is. Not just a one-time event, but for our whole life long. And the promise to come of being with Jesus forever. Please pray after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into our world. Thank you for the gift of baptism. Help me to know, believe, and live in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now continue with our hymn of the day.
Dear friends in Christ, on this uh, traditional day of remembering Jesus' baptism, we are reminded of our true identity in Jesus, our Savior, with great joy and rejoicing. We have uh, this uh, gift of God's Word, and it really comes down to the love of the Father. Wow, how powerful that is, the love of the Father. And as we journey through our life and after such a, a chaotic week, uh, especially in, at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., there are things that we need to be reminded of or remind ourselves of, even as God calls us to walk as the people of God, join Jesus on his mission in a world we're living in today. That very historic and important event, let's take a look at the reflection verse of Jesus being baptized. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and his spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love with you, I am well pleased. This is one of the most dramatic moments of all of scripture because it is truly one of the times that this veil, and maybe it's just kind of a thin veil, which is just beyond our reality, is opened up. Wow, just think of that. This thin veil of God's presence and of what we would kind of call heaven, which is in some place up there. Uh, it's, it's a whole sense of where God is at is opened up. Tore open, just like the angels when the heavens tore open and they sang when Jesus was born to the shepherds. And then we have God's voice that spoke through that veil because it had been opened up. And Jesus and the people heard a, that word of the Father. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. What wondrous, beautiful words those are. Although Jesus was sinless, he submitted himself to baptism. He understood the importance of being under him. And in so doing, we have an opportunity to, to hear those same words of the Father. For you, for me, for all people, that our Heavenly Father loves us and delights in us, for Jesus' sake. Well, part of our approach in our relationship with God, and certainly even uh, in our days, and even in the days moving forward, besides being on our knees in prayer, earnest prayer, is really humility. It's the opposite of power, political, economic power, right? The arrogance that goes along with that. C.S. Lewis describes humility as not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Let me say that again. Not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Jesus set us free to serve others. He empowers us to help others. So we don't have to focus on saving ourselves. He already did that. So we truly can think of ourselves less. This is what humility is all about. It truly is the opposite of it, of it not in terms of doesn't matter where you fall on the scale. All of the political powers in the world, they have a God-given place. They're important. But again, they're not always of God. Same thing with all of the economic power that's there. And we kind of focus on who's the wealthiest person in, in the world right now or who's upended who. This is not the way of God. The way of God is humility. When <clears throat> we cite that Jesus, the Son of God, lives in our world, he's a gentle man. He's obedient to his Father. He has compassion for his people to the point of dying on the cross. How powerful this is as we are reminded that Jesus, our Savior, came to us. So where's Jesus' humility? 
he was, he never thought less of himself, but he thought less, but he thought less, but he thought more of others than he did of himself. Where was his focus? The focus then is on those he has come to restore, to redeem. So in humility, Jesus comes to be baptized. In a lot of ways, he let John the Baptist be the instrument for doing what? To anoint him for his public ministry. That's why this important story follows what we had last week when Jesus was 12. Or the week before when Jesus at 40 days old was in the temple uh, with the, the purification of Mary and that sacrifice and his birth. He's about 30 years old, Luke tells us. And he's been living an ordinary life, but growing, developing, gaining perspective. I would have a sense that a lot of the stories he told in his parable were from his experience growing up, observing the world that he not only created, but now got to live in. Amazing when you think about it. So we find that in humility he is baptized. And in that moment of his being baptized... Then we have the Father who proclaims, and let's go back to the reflection verse, just 11. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I'm well pleased. And then back up to the verse 10, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Wow, how powerful that is. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is exactly what John says, I'm baptizing you with water for repentance one more powerful than i is going to baptize you with the holy spirit which we still identify very strongly with the water baptism the means by which we access the spiritual blessings of god baptism is the visible word of god because it is all about jesus and connects us to the work the life the death and the resurrection of jesus so we find in jesus's humility then that now all of a sudden The whole world, and especially on the other side of that veil, now we have the demonic world. Satan and everyone knows that this is the one. Well, things are still a little cloudy for uh, the people around Jesus. It took a few years of his whole ministry for them to understand, and not until his resurrection, but the journey begins. The path to the cross begins here at this moment because Jesus thinking less of him thinking less of himself for others went to the cross to be our savior shortly after this in humility he's driven into the wilderness to be tempted submitting to the same rigors of temptation that we experience as well and then following that he begins his ministry by healing the sick casting out the demons with great compassion and great love. This humility is so important. And God would call us, as we join Jesus on his mission in this world, to find our path to be one of humility. It is important that you have a good sense of your well-being and who you are. Call it self-esteem, whatever you want to maybe identify that. And one of the most important ways and significant ways to have a sense of who you are is when you're baptized and understand the significance of that. N.T. Wright has written that the whole Christian gospel could be summed up in this point, that when the loving God looks at us, at every baptized and believing Christian, he says to us what he said to Jesus on that day, He sees us not as we see ourselves, but as we are in Jesus Christ. God looks at us and says, you are my dear, dear child. I am delighted with you. Whoa. Talk about having a sense of who you are and identity and having a confidence that enables us to walk by faith in humbleness and service to others is knowing this. Oh, it's very likely, and there's no perfect father or mother. And maybe some of you have never really heard that sort of acceptance and of affirmation from your earthly father or mother. But here it is from God the Father. 
You are my dear, dear child. I am delighted with you. We're in his family. We belong to him. See, when it says, um, the comments that he sees us not as we see ourselves, we're pretty conscious of that, or, or, hope, or in humility at least we are, because part of humility is repentance, but as we are in Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about this robe of righteousness being covered over by the sinless Lamb of God, washed in the blood that comes out white, clean. And as we stand before God, it's because of Jesus that he sees us. And in that seeing us, we know that we have the love of the Father. Put your name in there. Put your name, first name. So for me, Andrew, you are my dear, dear child. I am delighted with you. Not because I'm so great. Not because of what I've done. Remember, Jesus already took care of that. It is because of what Jesus has done for us that frees us up and empowers us to walk into the future. And knowing that his kingdom is greater than any earthly kingdom, his kingdom is going to continue regardless of any kingdom or nation or president or political issue going on. We are called to walk as citizens of Jesus' kingdom, joining him on his mission to bless others and reach out to them. In the meantime, it can have a great and wonderful blessing on all of our community and all around us. So, humility in terms of thinking, not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less, of repentance, of becoming humble before God, turning back to Him. I entreat you to turn back to God. Repentance is not just about confessing sins. It's turning back to God. Wow. People turning back to God. People remembering and living out their baptism. Back to N.T. Wright's quote, looking at every baptized and believing Christian. Just think about that, every baptized and believing Christian. There's plenty of people that have been baptized that aren't necessarily believing as their life has unfolded. There's an opportunity to return, return to God, setting all those things that would be in the way of human effort and realize that it's Jesus that did this on the cross it's a gift it's called grace and in this grace of God we continue to walk and live the alb I'm wearing and alb is just the Latin word for white is really a baptismal gown it's a reminder of the robe of righteousness that Jesus has covered us over we come into his presence with a confession receive his word of forgiveness We receive this robe of righteousness in our baptism. And as we then live, we know that Jesus has redeemed us. Jesus, our Savior. And that God the Father sees us not as ourselves, but as we are in Jesus Christ. What a gift. What a gift that enables us to have that sense of well-being. No matter what's going on. I mean, why are Paul and Silas in our, our, uh, first re- our second reading singing in jail? Their identity was clear. And God worked in and through them. We find that in all circumstances, God calls us then to remember who we are as we are in Jesus Christ. Loved, forgiven. And I love that word, I am delighted with you. Wow, what a gift of the Father through Jesus and always living by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. For Jesus and the word Messiah or Christ, just two different languages, means anointed. So we have been anointed as well. I could have the confidence 
that God is with us. And it's our one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, it being of one substance with the Father by whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for his anointing by the Holy Spirit on the day of his baptism. And then, accomplishing the work that you gave him to do, to be our Savior, take our place on the cross, and then the glorious, powerful resurrection of Jesus to give us a full victory over sin, Satan, death. We pray that you would empower us as we once again are reminded of this gift of baptism, that we belong to you and your love is always with us. We bring before you times of duress and we ask that you would continue to watch over and be specifically with our nation we ask for peace and harmony, that you would pr protect, keep us free from violence, change hearts and minds to walk in humility, and that as we live as citizens of this land, we also know that we are citizens of your kingdom. For the days and weeks ahead, we pray for your presence, for your leading and guidance. We now have a moment of silence as we bring, humbly bring, our prayers before you on behalf of our nation. O oh Lord, we also pray for healing and peace. For those who are ill, we pray that you would watch over and be with all those that are working tirelessly in the medical profession. Give them strength, protect them from illness, especially uh, COVID-19. We ask that you would stem that tide and the vaccine that's being used will be effective to protect your people. We pray that you'd be with Mary McAllister, cousin of Michelle Noki having another surgery for uh, Monica Belize uh, having surgery on cancer surgery on the 16th as that you'd be with John and Stacy going through serious health issues and challenges bless them as they have difficult decisions to make we pray that you'd be with Pastor Ken Jenks who has uh, uh, fallen and uh, broken his knee 
uh, be with him in that healing and keep him free from pain. We ask your blessing in all in our hearts and minds. And for everyone that is in need of being refreshed, renewed, may the waters that come in our baptism also refresh and renew us to help us to live for you. We pray for the ministry of our congregation, for the Holy Cross Church Council that meets Monday evening. Bless them as they seek to guide us and administrate the affairs of our congregation in this time of pandemic. Help us to understand and know how you want us to be the church in these days. We thank you for all the resources that you have blessed our congregation with. And as we have received that blessing, help us to fulfill your expectations of how we use those resources and blessings. We celebrate the birthdays this week of Diane Stunkel, Ken Berry, Lynn Weishan, Larry Gorvad, and Kirsten Westrick. Bless these individuals as they are reminded of their baptism as they celebrate the gift of life that you have given to them. Be with Kelly and Teresa Codimo as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. Andy and Maureen Meyer. We pray as well, we pray that you would watch over and be with these couples. Grant them joy in their marriage and give them every opportunity to count the many blessings that you have bestowed upon them and their family. We also bring before you a need for rain in California. We ask that you would provide those winter rains that sustain life, just like the waters of baptism and your words sustain our spiritual lives. Rain that would be a blessing. The welfare of plants and animals, of people. And that as you provide this rain, we are able to use it wisely and in good stewardship. We ask your blessing upon all things on our hearts and minds as we entrust to you our very lives. For we rejoice that you don't see us in ourselves, but as we are in Jesus Christ, our Savior. We continue to remember our prayers in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Jesus that you saved.